Namaste. Aung Nama Shivaya. Today is Mahashivaratri. So we celebrate with the Shiva mantra, five syllable mantra. So I don't even have a topic for this. I don't even have a title for this. I'm just going to say what's on my mind because I got to say it. I have been in Tiruvannamalai for over a year now. And here I only did two things. One was to go through Ramana Maharshi's teaching. Not just only the books, but the practice as well. And two was to search for a teacher. A teacher who could understand where I'm at and take me farther. And as far as I have been able to observe and establish, and also from the accounts of others, I have to conclude that there is nobody like that. And not only that, there has not been one like that for maybe two generations. Sheshadri, Swamigal, Yogi Ram Surat Kumar, Uh, Neem Karoli Baba and of course Ramana himself and maybe one or two of his disciples like Sadhu Om but I can't find anybody who can even understand what I've been through let alone point to a direction ahead. That's why I'm feeling right now like I know nothing. Huh? But actually, I know everything. That's the problem. See, the complete knowledge, the complete spiritual teaching was divided up a long time ago huh? by Vyas. Vyas, the compiler of the Vedas, Vyas Dev, Bhadarayana. He divided the Vedas into four. Why? There are four yogas Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. So the four yogas were divided up. And the karma yogis went to the West. And their religions are dualistic, based on morality, and absolutist in their social pronouncements of right and wrong, and their control of society, and so on. And these people have basically taken over the world. That's the world we live in right now the context. But then the, the bhakti yogis, the bhakti yogis went south. They went to the South India and they cultivated the devotional worship of Shiva and Brahman. This is very deep. Why? Because it leads to enlightenment. It leads to the non-dual state very high development of bhakti yoga. Bhakti to the self. And of course, we've been over all this stuff in previous series. But the next thing was Raja Yoga. The Raja Yogis went to the east and to the north. They became Buddhists and Jainas. Although now the Jainas have have degenerated into karma yogis. Originally, they were like, see, both Mahavir and Buddha were kings. And they had had the training in Raja Yoga in childhood. 
And this comes out in their teachings, their logic, and so forth. So uh, that split off to the east and the north, China, Japan, all came under the influence of Raja Yoga teaching. And finally, Jnana Yoga. Well, Jnana Yoga, until very recently, was kept secret. Yes, of course, there's the original four Vedas and Upanishads, which are based on jnana. But their meaning is dark. It's hidden. And it was kept from almost everyone as a secret teaching, passed down only orally. And the last of that lineage was, as far as I can tell, Ramana Maharshi. Maybe one or two of his disciples had realized it. Huh? Realized it as a teaching, in other words, that could be passed on. Now, when I walk around on the roads here in Tiruvannamalai, I see, not all the time, but every once in a while, I see a realized soul. We recognize each other. There's a, a silent recognition that passes back and forth. It's very beautiful, but they don't speak English. <laughs> There's no possibility of any social relation. And that's as it should be. <laughs> that's wonderful. But of all the teachers and masters and uh, sanghas and organizations and temples and blah, 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 here, I haven't found anybody because I have studied all four branches, even Tantra. I studied and realized and taught successfully. So, you look at the videos on this channel. Huh? If you have the time, if you have the courage. <laughs> and you will find the complete teaching of all these four branches of yoga. Problem is, most people's minds are biased towards the type of yoga they currently understand and practice. Whether it's as a religion or through some guru or sangha or even by reading books or watching videos, uh, everybody is committed to some path, to some uh, background, to some ontological view. And because all views are limited, they cannot understand the other views. And so it appears to them like nonsense. Because they don't know what they can do with it. That means they're not gurus, they're not teachers. Because when you teach, you meet people from such a wide variety of backgrounds. And if you try to say, well, this is the only way and there's only one method and one path and you have to do it like this or you're in Maya, you exclude like the majority of people on planet Earth. How can you claim to be a guru if you're doing that? A guru means uh, one who speaks as Brahman. And Brahman includes everything, everybody. God loves everybody. God is love. He made you the way you are because he loves you. <laughs> he loves it. He's watching. He's enjoying you from within as you. It's so cool. But anyway, the Jnana teaching was kept secret until Ramana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi opened the doors and revealed it to everyone without any distinction, without any qualification. Pure jnana at last. But what happened? 
it became exploited by the other three types of people. And even now a new fourth type of exploiter has come out of it, the Neo-Advaita. Huh? We have Neo-Buddhism and uh, Neo-Abrahamic religions and Neo-Bhakti all over the place. So why not Neo-Advaita too? <laughs> well, because they're false and they don't work. They are, again, narrowing the view. Neo-Advaita, I'm not going to make this so long and go into all of these, but Neo-Advaita says, argues that simply by an intellectual adjustment in how we look at the world, we attain liberation. But this isn't true. That's the first step, yes. But then there's sadhana to be done. Why? Because of our previous conditioning. We have to offload it. And that takes a while, and it takes some self-discipline. It takes work. It takes courage, too. To live without a mind, to live without an ego, takes courage. It's not the way we're used to doing things. So, people take the easy way out. They take the bargain deal, huh? neo Adwaita. It's very easy. You just repeat the party line like any religion, faith-based religion, and boom, you're liberated. You don't have to listen to anybody because you're God, right? Bullshit. I call bullshit on all of it. And this place has become completely overrun, you know, with the weeds of neo Adwaita. I mean right up to the top of the biggest ashrams and so on. No more, uh, how can I say, non-dual bhakti. Only among the common people. And they're the ones who are becoming enlightened. They're the ones I see out on the street. Huh? The little old ladies. The, the kids born into this culture. The farmers working out in the fields. <laughs> Beautiful people, but they can't teach. They don't know English. They don't really know philosophy or ontology or any of that. So they can't, they can't really teach, but they sure can be <laughs> the real thing. And they're the people I discovered here, and they're the people that I love here, and they're the people that I hang out with. I don't go to the ashrams, I don't go to the satsangs, the kirtans, the temples. They disgust me because they have lost the real teaching. It's become an intellectual exercise only, with a lot of pride. Huh? I wrote a song once. One of the lines in the song was, I know the secrets of the heart. It's pride that keeps us far apart. Everybody's so damn proud of their teaching and their sangha and their guru and their this and their that. But their hearts are so narrow, their minds are so closed, they can only relate to people in their sangha, in their teaching, in their practice or whatever it is. So they lose their love. Well, once you turn off your love, you turn it off for everybody. You realize that? It's like, it's like sex. Once you turn off sex, you turn everything off. That's why I'm so anti, anti-sex. Yes, in the, in the higher ranges of sadhana, you forget all about sex because you forget the body. You don't identify with it anymore. But where most people find themselves, they can't forget about it. And so they cheat 
on their own beliefs and they feel guilt about it. And then they do self-destructive things. And, oh, it's a mess. It's neurotic. So I encourage people to explore sex fully. And I also encourage people to explore all the great teachings, all the lineages, all the uh, different branches of human knowledge, actually. So they can know what's what. But people stop educating themselves the minute they get out of school. <laughs> and then they're just trying to get what they want and enjoy life. Which, by the way, are two contradictory things. <laughs> because if you get you what you want, you will find that it doesn't make you happy. So how can you enjoy if you're simply reaping problems from all your efforts? Out of a lack of understanding, a lack of knowledge, a lack of background. So you have to read the Vedas. You have to read the Bible. You have to study the the Gita, you have to study the Guru Granth Sab, you have to study the Buddha Sutras, you have to study the Chinese and Japanese literature and learn their arts. Practice them. Even Native American spirituality and Pacific Islander spirituality and so on. And you'll find that most of these, especially at their roots, were not at all sex negative. Not at all. So, considering all that, and the fact that I was unable to find even a peer in Tiruvannamalai, I'm going to hit the road again. Why? Because I can't help anybody if I'm sitting here all alone. These videos, uh, you know, as useful as they might be for learning things, um, have limited bandwidth. What's needed is personal consultation, personal relationship, personal uh, teaching and coaching. So I'm going to hit the road until I find a place because as far as I can tell, I'm the dude, man. I haven't found anybody who knows more than I do or has realized more than I have. And I really tried, too. I really tried. I don't want to be the dude. I don't want to be the man. I don't. <laughs> By nature, I'm a disciple and an artist. What I want to do is follow along with somebody that I can love and respect. And I can't find anybody like that alive. They've all left the body. So that's fine. I can still communicate with them. But for practical purposes, uh, especially for social purposes, I need to find proper relationships. So... I'm going to have to create that for myself because it doesn't exist. So this is a way of introducing or warning you. <laughs> <coughs> warning you about what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I'm not going to specify what it is because frankly, I don't know myself what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm living here in the present. And I see what I've got to do right now. But things are going to change and get a lot more dynamic around here. So uh, I hope you're ready for that. I hope you stay with us. Uh, we're going to begin a much more interactive phase. So uh, come back and see the channel in a couple of weeks, I'll have a big surprise for you. Namaste. Om Hari Om.